Hello world, this is Craig. What I have here is my latest card for the SBC85, and this is a one megabit bubble memory card. Now I know I'm always saying that the most recent card I've made is the most fantastic thing I've ever seen, and but you know, in this case, I think that really applies. This is a very unique device, bubble memory. It's a non-volatile type of storage that came out in the 60s and 70s and really kind of peaked between 1981 and 1986 or so. And it's a very interesting technology. And amazingly, it's something that has been back in the news again. If you've heard anything of the the high density magnetic storage, uh, maybe you've heard of skirmions. Things like skirmions are really just a rediscovery of the concepts that are in these original bubble memory devices. Okay, so I'm not going to get into this too deep today. This is just an introduction to this board, but I think we do need to talk a little bit about exactly what bubble memory is. And so let's take a minute or so to discuss that. As I mentioned, bubble memory is a non-volatile. So once we create a bubble in here, it's permanent. It's there for many, many years until we come back and change that from a bubble to a non-bubble. And when we're talking about creating a bubble or a non-bubble, we're actually talking about the domain. The domain is either going to be a domain that is for example, facing up, or it's going to be a little domain that's facing down. So we're either looking at the north end of that domain or the south end of that domain. And that's all happening in a two-dimensional plane of bubbles. So this is a one megabit device. So we essentially have a million of these little bubbles floating around in this little two-dimensional plane. Okay, so let's talk about what that actually looks like. Well, bubble memory is a racetrack type of memory. So if we imagine that we've got a, a racetrack or some kind of a path where we've confined these bubbles, so the bubbles can move anywhere in this plane, and then we've come back and we've defined a path where they are restricted to move. So any bubble that's in that device, and this is what a device looks like when it's not wrapped, when it's not in the carrier, you can see it's a, a leadless carrier for this. There's also versions that are pinned. But anyway, any bubble that's in that device is going to be found on this racetrack. Each of these bubbles in this racetrack has an identifier. So this bubble right here, he has a certain number. Right up here, we have a place where there's no bubble. He's got a number. This bubble's got a number, so forth. In this particular device, each racetrack has 4,000 bubbles running around it. Okay. Now, on one end of this racetrack, we're going to feed this. So if we want to write data to this racetrack, first thing we have to do is move the bubble of interest. So let's say we're interested in this little bubble right here. Let's call him Bob. So we have to move Bob all the way around until he gets right here to this end of the racetrack. This is where we're going to feed a new bubble. So this spot for Bob is right here. Now I create either a bubble or I create no bubble. By this again, I mean a bubble whose north is up or a bubble whose north is down. I create that. I bring Bob so that he's in the right spot and then I swap whatever is in that spot in this racetrack with whatever I created, either a north bubble or a south bubble. And then he's in that racetrack. I can move him around and, and he's permanent. Whatever I put in there is now going to stay in there until I come back later, bring him right to this point again and swap him out for something else. I also have to have on this end a little place where I can take bubbles out so that I can run them into a detector. Okay, and what I have up at this end is I don't actually take the bubble out because I don't want to destroy that memory, but if I have a little north bubble here, I duplicate him into another little reservoir here. So I cycle him around until Bob's up here at the top, and then I duplicate Bob into a detector. If Bob happens to have a north bubble, then I would duplicate the north bubble. If it's a south bubble, I duplicate the south bubble. Okay, basically that's how this works. I've got this racetrack, Racetrack's got 4,000 bubbles in it, and then I duplicate that over and over and over again. Actually, in this case right here, there's 272 of these racetracks. The reason, the reason there's 272 instead of 256 is because these devices have ECC. They have error checking and correction, so it can correct itself if, if something goes missing in this scheme. This input, instead of just having one little place where I create a bubble, I actually have another magnetic line here or a line where I can have bubbles in it. And I have a generator and that generator serially feeds this line with these 272 bits. 
And so there'll be north bubbles and south bubbles all along this input line. What I do is when I want to store data, I write these 272 bits of data to this input line. I then bring around the bubble through the racetracks until all of them are down here at this bottom, the bubble of, of interest. So all the bobs are down here at the bottom. And then for each of them, I swap whatever's in the racetrack with whatever is in this line. So basically that's how my data gets from this line, the data I want to write, into the racetracks. Okay, and then once it's in the racetrack, the racetrack then walks away or rotates away and I go on and I load the next bubble. Okay, now all the bubbles that I took out of the racetracks here when I swapped, they're now on this input line, but I really don't care what they are. I just take these things down here and I flush them in a destructor. So I get rid of the bubbles out here in, in a destructor. Now when I want to read this, I have to do the same thing. I have to walk these bubbles around until the bubble of interest is at the very top. I have an output line. And on the output line, again, I don't swap because I don't want to destroy the memory, and so I duplicate. So I have a little circuit here that duplicates whatever happens to be in this racetrack at that point, either a north or a south bubble. I duplicate it on the output line. And then I march this output line out, and this is where my data comes from. So I run this into a serial parallel converter, and I create my 272 bits back out of those lines. So those are the basics of bubble memory, and you can see there's some minor functions I have to have. I have to be able to walk all of these bubbles around these loops, have to be able to walk them down these lines, the input line and the output line. I have to be able to swap bubbles have to be able to duplicate bubbles, have to be able to generate bubbles, flush bubbles, and then over here I have to be able to detect bubbles. Okay, so that's really all that's in this 7110 is these 272 racetracks, the input line, the output line, a detector and a generator, and a destroyer. Okay, so in order to get this guy working, that's where we have to have these support chips. Okay, so this is where the main bubbles live. This is the two-dimensional plane of bubbles. I have these six support chips around here. This bottom one is the 7220, and this is the main interface to the outside world. So whenever I'm communicating with this, I only have to be able to understand how to put things into the 7220. And it's fairly typical. It's just a it's port addressed. So I have a little SIP here to select which port number it is, and then these are just buffers and latches and so forth in order to get things into this 7220 and get things back out of the 7220. This board also has to have its own uh, 4 megahertz clock over here, so I have an oscillator over here to generate that 4 megahertz. Okay, so what are the rest of these guys doing? Well, in the center is our 7110, and this is the actual bubble itself. We have the 7220, and that's the interface to the outside world. In this case, it's interfacing to the SBC85. This chip over here on the right-hand side, when I said that we had to do some things like duplicate and swap and so forth, that's what this chip does. So this is a pulse generator. This is the 7230 pulse generator. And there's some discrete lines that come out of the 7220, go into the pulse generator, and then out of the pulse generator and into the bubble. So if I say that I want to do a swap, the 7220 controls that, it comes out the swap line, it triggers this, and then the 7230 triggers that pulse, or triggers that swap mechanism inside the bubble. Okay, that's what this pulse generator does. If we look over here on the other side, I have another chip, and he's a dual function chip. First thing he does is he's called a formatter. So if I look over here, this is my 7242. He communicates with the 7220 over a serial data. So there's serial data that goes between the 7220 and the 7242. When I'm writing data, I first load data into the 7220. That then goes serially up to the formatter, and that's where this long line of generated bubbles come from. So the formatter creates this long line of bubbles. The formatter then writes those bubbles into the bubble plane itself. 
Okay, so the first thing that this has to do is it has to write, it has to format and write bubbles into the 7110. The other thing this chip does is it also has the sensor to detect the bubbles. So when the bubble moves around, it's in front of the sensor. This guy has a amplifier in it. He detects the bubble and then he sends that information back down to the 7220. So along this, when I'm ready to detect a bubble, all of these bubbles after they are swapped, I'm sorry, after they are duplicated on this end, they're now in the output line. That output line marches its way on down and as it goes past the detector, this 7242 detects each bubble, creates that serial stream that goes into the 7220 that then formats it into parallel and it's read, read in and out the port. Okay, so that's the 7242 and that's the format and it's also the sense. So this is the format sense because it both writes the bubbles and it senses the bubbles in the detector. Okay, these three guys up here, what we have in the center, that is the 72, 7250 and this is the coil pre-driver. So remember, if we if we were to cut this guy open, what we would find is there's a fine wire that's wrapped around it in this direction, and then another one that's wrapped around it in this direction, and that defines the X and the Y planes. And what those are doing, those are coils that are going to create a magnetic field in the X and the Y. It's that magnetic field that we use to walk these bubbles around this racetrack. Okay, and driving that X and Y is the function of these three chips up here. So we have the 7250 coil pre-driver, and then we have two 7254s, and these are the two guys. One of them is connected to the X coil, and the other is connected to the Y coil. And it drives those two coils in order to get the magnetic field in the X plane and the Y plane to get these bubbles to move. Those are controlled directly, so there's, there's four pins that are controlling this uh, for the X and the Y. Those are just directly controlled from the 7220 up to the pre-driver, and then that pre-driver has an H-bridge here for the X and an H-bridge here for the wire that then come down and drive the magnetic fields on this. So that's really all there is to this. It's a fairly straightforward board, and this was duplicated anytime I could from the original, I think it's the BPK-72, which was a little engineering board that Intel put out in, in maybe 1981 or so. Uh, to give to engineers or sell to engineers so that they could become familiar with with bubbles. There's the one megabit bubble and then they also came out later with a four megabit bubble and I may come back and do the four megabit card later but for right now this is just the one megabit card. So this is pretty exciting. It's exciting that you know we can build this now. As I mentioned it's a project that I've had you know decades that I've wanted to do this and you know originally when these came out they were I think $3,500 for the set of bubbles of basically the set of the 7110 and these five little uh, control chips around it. The controller was additional. And so it's pretty exciting that, you know, we can still find these things available to buy and build a one megabit bubble memory. And the other thing that makes this interesting is, you know, right now, if you've seen in the news about the high density magnetic storage, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about a two dimensional array. They have these skirmions, which are just little vortices of, of bubble domains. And that's essentially just this rebranded, uh, you know, this 40, 50 year old technology that is rebranded in today's uh, literature. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to tell you about this. It's exciting. I just got this thing running today and now I'm coming back and I'm writing some more software to polish it so it's easier to access this because right now I'm hacking this out, you know, one command at a time in order to uh, communicate with this. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any feedback, let me know. All right, bye-bye.